Hello, I'm Elie Catan and I will present you the work I did with uh, Amélie Rocher-Capellan, Pascal Perrier and François Bérard about learning to deal with latency in direct touch interaction. So today, touch devices have latencies typically around 70 or 80 milliseconds and such latency impacts the comfort of users when interacting on smartphones, tablets or larger interactive touch surfaces. Angie and colleagues showed that most people are able to notice 10 milliseconds of latency. Oh, it should be moving. When moving a square on a touch screen, and some people are even able to perceive 2 milliseconds. And Rota and colleagues showed that dragging performances are negatively impacted by latency even under 25 milliseconds, a threshold which is far from typical latencies we can find on commercial devices today. So we have a bunch of other studies about touch latencies, but they all share one common point, they are short terms. All these studies investigated the effect of latency only on, on short time spans, like 30 minutes to one hour. But in everyday life, uh, people use their devices uh, re by repeating the same task again and again. And we wondered if we go for a longer study, maybe people might adapt to the latency. But adaptation, what does that mean? So uh, according to Krakauer and Mazzoni, adaptation is a form of learning characterized by gradual improvement in performance in response to altered conditions. So here, altered condition might be a perturbation like the latency. So we know for the, from the motor control field that the human brain is capable to adapt to a lot of different perturbations. This is one example where people can adapt to rotational perturbations. So if the visual feedback of a pointing gesture is modified by a 30 degrees rotation, here counterclockwise, then progressively we can see that participants of the experiment can learn to point 30 degrees clockwise to manage to get to the target. So this is adaptation. And when there is adaptation, it's also interesting to study transfer. So transfer is the question of, is the adaptation specific to the training task, or can it be generalized? For example, if we move the target on the left side, will participant be pointing toward the target, which would indicate no transfer, or 30 degrees clockwise, which would show that participants are able to generalize what they have learned on the training task for different target positions. But let's go back to latency. There is also some studies in the literature about adapting to latency. Fultz and Mayal have studied the adaptation of participants to the delay on a tracking task. <coughs> they studied the tracking error evolving with the repetitions of trials over a two days experiment. At zero milliseconds of delay, there was no progress. At 200 milliseconds of delay, we can see that the difference between the two groups decreases, but very slowly. And this is also the case at 300 milliseconds. So adaptation may occur, but the process seems very long. Another point is that the experimental conditions in this experiment are quite far from the touch latency condition we are interested in, because uh, Fuchs and Mayal were using big delays over 200 milliseconds, and the interaction was indirect using a joystick to control the cursor. And these differences are true for almost all the motor control studies about latency. During the interaction, the hand is not seen, either because uh, the interaction is indirect or the hand is hidden, like on this picture. And the study investigates what happens when there is a mismatch between the participant proprioception and the participant vision. But in touch conditions, vision and proprioception are in agreement, since the finger is visible. And the problem is between an expected behavior of the feedback and its actual behavior. So if there is adaptation, that might happen differently. So our main, our main scientific question is, do people adapt to touch latency? Based on results in motor control, we expect that it could happen, and we thus have four more questions in the case that it happened. So this question are, is the adaptation total or partial? How long does the adaptation take? How long does the adaptation last? 
And is the adaptation specific to the training task, or can we observe a transfer to another task? To answer all these questions, we designed the user study. The idea is to train users on a task with latency and observe their progress across sessions. So first, we had to choose a task to train participants. Our first idea was to use the classical, the classical positioning task, so dragging an object to a target, which was used in previous papers to assess the influence of the latency. But the problem with this task is that it is very common, so different participants may have very initial training on the task, and participants who own touchscreen devices already perform this task in their everyday life, and it would be very difficult to control the level of training of each participant. So to avoid these problems, we choose to use a tracking task. So participants have to manipulate a red disk object and follow a target moving around an ellipse. So you can see that on the video. Uh, so this is someone performing the task with 75 milliseconds of delay. To emphasize the temporal nature of the latency, we chose an ellipsoidal tracking trajectory with variable speed. And you can see that because of the latency, depending on the target speed, the center of the disk is closer or further from the finger. So there are three laps per trial. One lap is just for warm up, and then the error between the, disk, the red disk and the target is averaged on the last two laps. Between each trial, we display the results to the participants in order to motivate them to improve. So you will be able to see that right now. And there is 60 trials per session, and each session lasts half an hour. So we train 10 participants on the tracking on the ellipse during 10 sessions of 60 trials spread over two to three weeks. But this experimental design is not sufficient. Because if we see a decrease of the tracking error with sessions, we would not be able to say if this is an adaptation to the delay or just an improvement of tracking skills. So we thus need a control group with people performing the task with ideally no delay. So here you can see at the bottom the task performed in the control condition with a very low delay, which is a 25 millisecond baseline plus a prediction to bring the delay close to unperceivable levels. If you compare with the test condition, you can see that the red disk stick more precisely to the finger when the delay is very low, while it seems to float around the finger when the delay has, it is at 75 milliseconds. So there is another group of 10 people who perform the task, but in the control condition. These 10 guys in the control group are not the same than those of the uh, test group, because we cannot reuse people, since training in one condition would obviously influence the results in the other one. And one important point of this between subject design is to balance the groups to avoid any bias in the results that might be due to an initial disparity. So to solve this, at the very beginning of the experiment, each participant has to perform what we call the balancing task, with 10 trials of tracking that enable to assess each participant's individual performance and to assign her in one of the two groups. So we add the balancing task at the beginning of the experiment. And if you remember, we also wanted to know if adaptation occurs, if this adaptation can transfer to a similar task. So for this, we pre-test participants on a second task, and then after the training on the ellipse, we do a post-test. Since the perception of latency strongly depends on the speed of the object, we wanted to know if learning to deal with latency on a given speed profile could be transferred to another speed profile. So for the transfer task, we decided to use another tracking shape with a different speed profile. So this is what it looks like, an infinity symbol. So we add the pretest and the post-test to our study schedule. And this is the final planning of the experiment with the transfer task before and after the training. So now, let's see the results. On this graph, you can see the average tracking error in millimeters for the two groups, depending on the session. So these are, for now, the results at session one. Participants of the test group dealing with latency 
had more error than in the control group. This matches the results of the literature with a difference around 15 to 20% between 0 and 75 milliseconds of, of latency. People of the control group show less error across the sessions. This accounts for improving their tracking skills with training. Participants of the test group also have progress, but the interesting thing here is that they come closer to the control group across sessions. The gap between the two groups is more than halved at the 10th session. It indicates that in addition to the tracking skills, participants in the test group also learned to deal with, delay, with the delayed feedback and progressively latency loses some of its negative impact thanks to practice. If we extrapolate these points with exponential curves, it suggests that both groups would come even closer with successive sessions with almost the same asymptotes. So now this is the results for the transfer task. This is the pretest for the control group on the infinity shape before the training on the ellipse. And this is the post test after the training on the ellipse. So there is a significant progress, meaning that some of what was learned during the training on the ellipse can be transferred to better perform the tracking on the infinity shape. This progress of the control group thus accounts for the transfer of tracking skills from the ellipse to the infinity shape. And the test group also has progress, but what is more interesting is that the amount of transfer for the test group is larger with a steeper slope here on the graph. And it indicates that more than tracking skills, participants also transferred their ability to deal with the latency. So if we come back to our questions, do people adapt to touch latency? Yes, because the performances of the test group came closer to those of the control group. This adaptation takes time and is still partial in our study. A longer study would be necessary to know if the compensation can be total. How long does it take? Days. Is this compensation specific? We have just seen that it can be transferred to a similar task. And we have one question left. How long does that last? So to answer this question, we ran a secondary study. The idea was to call back some of the participants between seven and nine weeks after the last training session and to see if the adaptation was forgotten or not. So here the protocol was just to repeat 30 trials of tracking on the ellipse. So these are the results. On this graph, we compare the error on the post session with the error on session one and 10. We can see that most of what was learned during the training is not forgotten since the results are closer to those of session 10 than to those of session one. And also, the little quantity that was forgotten, in, uh, on this little quantity, there is not much difference between the control and the test group. This means that what was learned about adapting to latency in the test group is also well memorized. So how long does the, does the adaptation last? Weeks at least. So in summary, people can learn to compensate the latency. It takes days, but has good retention. It, and it can also be transferred to a similar tracking task. So the latency may be less harmful than what was thought based on previous studies, but the results have to be generalized. That is indeed one limit of our study. Based on a control lab experiment, we demonstrated that people have the ability to develop mechanisms that enable to lower the negative impact of the latency. But does this apply in the real world with multi-device, with different latencies and different tasks? This would need further investigation. But in any case, our study shows that studies spread on several days enable to have better insights on the latency effects on user performances. And so future work on latency should thus favor long-term studies in order to get more precise results. So thank you for your attention. We have time for a few questions. If anyone has some, just come to the microphone. I have a very quick one. Um, I was wondering if you experimented with uh, non-predictable shapes and whether that, do you think that would influence your results or not? Because um, it seems like doing the uh, ellipsoid shape and the infinite shape um, it's a task that users can somewhat predict. Can you comment on that? 
Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so actually, uh, in this experiment, um, we did uh, all all we could do to favor the adaptation to see if it's possible. And this uh, question of predictability of the trajectory, we um, we based the idea on a previous work from the motor control field uh, on a paper who says that uh, adaptation to delayed feedback uh, could be only possible if the trajectory is predictable. But I don't think it's, it's such an important point because when you are doing tasks on your touch devices, basically you know what you want to do, so basically your trajectory is at least some a bit predictable. Oh, sorry. Hi, um, Michelle Ann at Mishmash Makers. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for actually using a retention and transfer paradigm from the motor learning literature. I like greatly appreciate that you actually looked at learning and not just performance. So like, thank you, thank you so much. Um, my question is actually, I noticed your targets were actually quite big and I was wondering why they were so large because it looks like it might have over amplified the latency of your system. Yes, it's true that with smaller targets, there is less perception of latency. But here, yeah, I guess if you look at the videos, uh, like we needed to have targets at least we kind of bigger than the finger because we didn't want the finger to occlude and make the task even more difficult to follow the target. That's why we. So, like, how that. how much bigger were they than the average finger? How, how big is the average finger? Like, like No, sorry. How big was the target? Was it like twice the size of the average finger? Uh, I don't remember exactly the size. It's in the paper, but so you can see the, the real size, but I think it was close to twice the size of the finger, okay. yes. Thank you. But it depends also on the finger. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, uh, Jonathan Deber, Taxual Labs. Uh, I want to agree, very great work, very well designed study. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering if you had any thoughts about the transferability of what was learned to different latencies because different devices are extremely different and even the same device over time, depending on what the workload of the system is and so on, can change. So do you have any thoughts about what was learned? Could that be used if we went up to 100 or we went down to 50 or so on? Yeah, uh, I agree on that, especially that's what, that's what I said at the end. Uh, we are in the real life, we are dealing with many different applications and with different latencies. Uh, actually, so you can find uh, a bit of answer already in the motor control literature. When so, um, in a lot of studies, people are trained with uh, some level of latency and then at the end they try to raise the level of latency and here, so keep in mind that it's not study about direct touch, it's study about end indirect touch with uh, no vision of the, the hand, but uh, in these studies, uh, they see that um, when you're trained on, uh, for example, 200 of latency, uh, you handle 400 milliseconds easy, uh, in, a, in an easier way than if you were trained with zero. So basically if you ad adapt to one level of latency, it's easier. And we also did actually a second study uh, with uh, two different latency levels. And we saw, so it's not exactly your question, but we saw that um, when you learn some skills with latency, you can transfer the skills with a uh, zero latency level. So it's kind of the opposite of your question, but it's also interesting. So Thanks. does that answer? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks. That's my question too. Oh. <laughs>